Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Today guys, we will show you how to remove and replace front brake pads on any car guys. We will show you, we will show you the guide what you need to do. There will be some minor differences, but we'll demonstrate on this Hyundai Elantra and this will cover most of the vehicles guys. The differences will be in the uh, in the torque specs and we'll share links for the manuals where you can check that. So make sure you check the description guys for more details. So make sure guys you stay until the end because uh, there is something that you have to do for your safety and make sure you don't crash your car after you replace your brakes. Okay guys, first thing that we need to do, you gotta make sure that the car is in park or in gear and the emergency brake is all the way up. This is when you're working on front brake pads replacement. Next you need the uh, stop the, the, the vehicle ramps, stop ramps, okay. So you need to install those on the opposite diagonal side that you're working on. Okay, we're working on the front right, we install them on the rear left. Okay, next. It's very important guys to know how to get your lug nuts tight. If you get them too tight like we have right here, we had to use a cheating pipe to get them loose. Because somebody got them way too tight. And it shouldn't be, shouldn't be that way guys. So make sure you check our video out. It's very important to get them tight the right way. After that, you need to find in the menu of your vehicle, it will be specified where to jack up the vehicle. You can always find that in your menu. Okay, for instance, right here, you can see what to do in emergency, how to replace your spare tire. It gives you the lifting points of the vehicle. Okay, we have it. Up now in the air, it's very important to use a jack stand. Always, guys, do that. And I'll tell you why because if one simple o ring or something goes out in a hydraulic uh, jack, even if it's a manual jack, the vehicle will fall on you while you're working on it. We have the jack stand there, and there is absolutely something else that we do every time we do a brake replacement. And let me show you what it is now. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove the lug nuts now and we'll remove the tire. Okay, now what we'll do guys, we'll take the tire, the wheel, and we'll put it under the car. Let's say something goes terribly wrong, for some reason the jack stand doesn't hold and the jack it's going to drop on the tire. The worst thing that will happen is you'll scratch your wheel, but that could save your wife. So always do that. Next, you need to go inside the vehicle and turn the steering wheel to the right. That's if you're working on the right side of the vehicle. If you're working on the left side, you need to turn to the left. Okay, that's because that way we can reach the bolts on the back side. Okay, perfect. Okay guys, it's important. What's important to do is when you replace your brake pads, you always have to have your rollers inspected. When you put new pads, the least you can do is take your rollers off and get them turned in a machine shop or part, the car parts store. They do that relatively inexpensive, but uh, what we found actually for the same price, we can purchase brand new rollers and pads. So every time we install pads, we recommend putting a new, new disc roller because there is a certain minimum uh, thickness on the roller that you can check to see if yours is still good or not. But for the money that you're going to pay to have them uh, turned, we can purchase a new roller. So that's what we'll be doing, new rollers with new brake pads. Okay, next thing that we'll need to do, okay, this is the brake caliper right here. And there is usually two bolts for it. One here and one identical for this one. And those are the glides right here where the, uh, the brake caliper slides left and right. Okay, we'll have to remove those first now. So those usually, it really depends on the vehicle guys, some are with a smaller socket size, some bigger. Specifically for this one, it's a 14, but you can see anything like 13, 15s, 12s, really depends on the vehicle size and the make and model. Okay, we'll remove those. That's what it looks like and the bolts almost always have thread lock on them. Okay, perfect. Now, you will need to slide the roller out of uh, the the caliper out of there now but one thing about it okay that brake shim right here 
it might be it might be stuck so it will be good to spray a little bit of WD-40 on it okay because if it's stuck uh, it won't come out and you gotta make sure that your okay your uh, new brake pads come with the shims otherwise you can uh, some people say that you can reinstall your old ones it's not too big of a deal I guess but we always install new ones okay we'll compress the rotor uh, just a little bit like that okay so we have a little bit of move now okay let's see next it's still it's still holding there you see how it's holding the brake pad okay so we need to hit it a little bit just gently tap it okay so it can release it's okay it came loose this is this hasn't been replaced for 67,000 miles. Okay, you can see how it was stuck on it. Really good. Okay, now you need to get a heavy duty zip tie or a bungee cord and you need to tie it for the strut tower. That way it will not hang on the brake line because if it hangs on the brake line what's going to happen is you will create too much uh, stress on it, put too much stress and you can damage the brake line. Next, usually most of the most of the uh, brake pads slide towards the outside. Okay, like that. The inside brake pad is identical procedure as the outside. There is one difference between the two. Okay, and the difference is right here. This one has the metal, kind of like a sensor, but it's a metal plate. And when that thing touches the disc roller, what happens? It activates a light inside the car that tells you to replace your brakes. So this is on the uh, most likely on the inside part, but make sure how you remove yours. Okay, the brake lights right there. You can remove those and replace them with new ones if your kit comes with ones. If not, we can use some brake cleaner, clean them and lubricate them. We'll show you how to do that. But we recommend to get the kit with the new ones. Okay, now, uh, so far guys, so far uh, we removed the brake pads. Now we need to remove the roller. But in order to do that, we we'll need to remove the brake caliper bracket right here. And this one is usually with a bigger, bigger socket and there is two bolts on the back side that hold it, usually. Okay, get those loose. Okay, perfect. And now, when you remove the first bolt for the second one, you have to hold it with your hand, hold the bracket because it will drop on the floor. Okay, one bolt is out second bolt perfect we got it out we'll need to use some thread lock on those bolts as well when we put it together okay now you can see how the roller formed thrust between the roller and the hub and uh, it will be stuck to the hub and you won't be able to uh, get it out of the way so if you use WD-40 penetrating spray or something similar uh, and soak it for about 10 minutes guys it will come out easy we'll get a Phillips screwdriver now okay and we need to remove these two screws some have only one some don't have even screws but most of them will have one it will be stuck you won't be able to remove it so you need to tap on the screwdriver okay you need to have a heavy duty screwdriver so you can hit it with a hammer because some cheap plastic ones will fall apart and we can go ahead and remove them Okay, second one came loose as well, perfect. So now, you grab the hammer and you gently tap it, okay. Don't hit the, the bolts for the tire. Okay, and this is the roller, guys. And this one is the old one. It's, you can even see that it had a low spot right here, how it didn't. Okay, it's not even. So, definitely needed to replace this one. You can find the thickness minimum thickness and all that stuff I'm going to show you on the new one where to look for next you need to get some sandpaper you need to clean the hub really good where it has rust okay so the new roller can go easy on the hub and it will contact the hub in a even way okay get some brake cleaner guys spray brake cleaner okay always use uh, eye protection face mask and gloves when you do things like that 
Okay, you can see all the rest coming out. So you just make, make sure that it's smooth and then your roller will just slide on the hub. Perfect. Okay, this is the new front roller. You can see how it's not shiny, okay? You can see it's uh, cut in a special way and usually, okay, you can find the requirements for the minimum thickness of the roller on the side of the roller, right? This one is 21.4 millimeters, okay, right here. And uh, when you get them brand new guys, they'll always be covered in oil, lubricant. And this is because when it's shipped, when it stays in the store, it doesn't form any rust for moisture. So get again the brake cleaner and spray, spray the roller really good. Okay, get a, get a shop towel and clean it. Okay, you can see. Just gotta make sure you have absolutely no oil now on the roller because if you do, uh, you can see all the oil, you will have decreased stopping power, which is not a good thing. Okay, right there again. Perfect. Look at that thing, how shiny it is. Okay, we are ready to install it now. We have the links guys on our uh, For all the tools that we use in the description of the video check out the links You need to get, get, make sure that the holes for the screws are where they're supposed to be. They go only one way That way guys if you need to get tools or parts we have the links below so you don't have to waste so much time Okay, perfect working on the second one now. Get them tight. And now, okay, those things that we removed, since our kit didn't come with new ones, we're going to clean them really good, okay, with, with some brake cleaner. Spray them good, clean them. Usually you have brake dust built on them. You won't have any corrosion because it's uh, the material it's not made to corrode there, but they'll just have a lot of brake dust on them. Okay, even though they look uh, a little bit dark, that's fine. You just have to make sure that they're clean where the brake pad contacts, usually right here in the canals. Okay, perfect. Now we'll just go ahead and install them. Okay, on the bracket. Okay, one is in, one more to go. Okay, right there. Next, we need to get some thread lock. We need to install some on the boat. Okay, the ones for the bracket. Those are usually the two bigger boats. And you can find the torque specs for your specific vehicle online, guys. We'll share the links in the description for where to look for manuals. Okay, right there. And that way guys, that way if you need something you can find it because every vehicle is different. Okay, we'll get them tight. Okay, with this thing now and with the torque wrench for our specific vehicle, uh, but that doesn't guarantee that yours is the same. It's about 80 foot per pound. Okay, so we need to go to about 80 foot per pound. That's what it needs to be. So. We'll go ahead, set the torque range for 80, and we will do that. Okay. Let's get them tied. You hear a click when it's ready. Okay, one more. Perfect. Okay, guys, now it's time to, um, to grease the pads, and we'll show you where and how to apply grease and stuff like that, because uh, we've seen all kind of different things but we'll, we'll show you how we do it if you have any suggestions let us know okay this shim needs to come on the on the new pad okay we'll need to remove it because the new pad doesn't come with it okay you have to clean okay your shim really good if it comes with new one even wipe it to make sure you don't have any dust and dirt if you have dirt you might be able to hear some rattling from your brakes okay and now we use brake grease. You can buy it in big quantities, small quantities, depending what you need. You can just buy it for one time job. And you're going to apply a very, very thin amount on the back. Okay, apply this shim now. Okay, now we're going to apply some on the back where the caliper contacts. You can see right here. 
just a thin thin layer guys that way you will not have any rattling next where the brake pad slides back and forth it's this one right here a very very thin amount of it okay like that perfect and this pad is ready never ever apply on this side because if you do you have no stopping power again on this one right here we're going to do the back side where it contacts the caliper okay like that and we'll do the sides and use only brake grease for that purpose okay perfect you can apply a very thin amount on on the glides right there but don't put too much you just have to pretty much just wipe your wipe uh, like i think it's seven grams for both front wheels that you can get a package and that's plenty so you don't need uh, much at all okay you can see how thin it is you don't want to have big uh, blob of grease there okay so now we're going to go ahead and install the brakes okay and you can see where they go okay like that so when they slide there they will have uh, uh, they will have a little bit of grease to lubricate now this sensor this is the one towards the back there most likely okay and just this one goes like that as well okay the inside is in too you gotta make sure that you have the brake part the correct way okay next guys we will need to compress the piston inside because the newer parts will be wider so we will not be able to put the caliper on top of the new parts so this piston will go in but you can see it has dirt okay and stuff inside so what you gotta make sure you clean it with brake cleaner okay because when you compress it you'll be clean to go in otherwise you might damage your seal there okay just spray it and wipe it okay don't spray too much just a little bit okay next for lubrication guys what we will need to do we will need to use some white lithium grease and apply a very very thin layer here okay and this is so uh, it will have some lubrication when it goes in the seal because otherwise it will be too dry and you can damage the seal okay apply that okay just like that next we can actually go ahead and get the, uh, the caliper compressor tool and do the compressing of the piston so you have usually with that tool that we use guys check the links in the description of the video we have the product links you have left hand side and right hand side this is the right hand side because we're working on the front right you need to find the one that fits okay in your caliper okay this one right there fits great okay and you can see how it goes on top of this one next we'll need to get that plate guys okay that plate you install it there <laughs> don't drop it okay and let let us show you now what you need to do okay you need to go in the caliper like that and now you need to turn this one like that until the plate touches the caliper on the inside and you don't have play okay check it out now you just turn clockwise and see how it's going to compress the piston now you just have to hold it to make sure that it doesn't break the zip tie you use heavy duty zip tie so we don't put any pressure on the brake line and we keep compressing keep compressing okay check it out perfect guys super easy super easy to use and now we can go ahead okay get it loose and we can pull it out okay now we are ready to cut the zip tie guys there and we're going to show you when it goes okay we're going to put the caliper on top here now okay and we need to make sure you press those things in the glides and you can remove and grease those as well ours look pretty nice so we're not going to okay but check it out now we don't uh, that's where it's contacting right here 
and that's where the grease is so you won't hear uh, any rattling and things like that so that's how it should be done okay thread lock again on the other two nut bolts now actually okay and you need to get those okay you gotta make sure that you install both before you get one of them tight because that way you can move the caliper up and down back and forth if you need to to make sure that you get the bolts right make sure they go by hand so you don't cross thread them again different torque specs for different cars for our specific one this one is between 20 and 25 so we will, we will set the torque wrench in a little bit and we will get them with the, with the torque wrench but for your vehicle guys check your service manual because again the size of the vehicle the make of the, div of the vehicle and the size of the brakes are way different for every vehicle okay let's hear if we're going to have a click we'll usually go a little bit on one then the other one and at the end get them tight okay hear the click now okay that's it right there we have enough it's important to use the torque wrench for those things guys okay we got it tight now guys it's very very important to do that before you start and drive the vehicle you need to go inside and you need to keep pressing the brake pedal at least 10 times okay so you can compress the brake caliper and you can have the brakes working let me tell you why now if you don't do that you might have a little bit of uh, free space in the caliper and when you hit the brake pedal the first two three times you might not have brakes if you do that and you try to move the car and all of a sudden you won't have brakes the first two times you use the brakes so one person now okay should be inside the vehicle and hold the brakes make sure that you cannot turn the roller then you know that it's compressed you can also inspect if it presses the brake pads all the way okay so don't forget to do that next guys you gotta make sure you clean all the tools out of the way and we can go ahead and install the tire it's very very important guys to get your tire like uh, tire nuts tied to a specific torque specs we have the video how to find this information for free because if you don't get them tight enough you might lose your wheel so one thing that you need to use guys is we recommend a torque wrench we have the links under the the video guys in the description make sure you check it out but we'll do that guys get everything tight and pretty much that's the whole video so thank you guys for watching please subscribe and see you guys next time